Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about two things that affect whether a reaction happens in nature. Very squeaky chair. And those two things are enthalpy and entropy. So let's get started. So all systems in nature have two basic tendencies. And this follows chemical systems, physical systems, etc. They have a tendency to move toward lower enthalpy or lower heat or energy, which means whatever the products are at the end of that action will tend to have less potential energy than the reactants. Think about it like this. Um, a ball is not going to roll uphill on its own, okay? Um, most chemical reactions out there are exothermic because of this natural tendency. Systems have a tendency to lose heat over time, not increase over time in terms of their heat. So this describes exothermic reactions and there is a natural drive toward enthalpy in reversible reactions, which means they might tend to slightly favor the exothermic direction for a reaction. So how do you know if a reaction in general results in a lower energy than it started with? How can you tell? Well, you look at the delta H. Remember, delta H is your heat of reaction. It's also your enthalpy. If your delta H is a negative number, you know there has been a release of energy and that is an exothermic system. Or if energy is shown as a part of the products in your chemical reaction. If energy is shown in the products, then you know that you are looking at something that has lower enthalpy at the end than what it began with. If the products have less energy than the reactants, this is thinking back to that classic potential energy diagram where the reactants were high and the products were low. Okay, That would be a tendency toward lower enthalpy or a release of heat. Now, the second thing that tends to be favored in nature is an increase in entropy. Entropy is a term you might not have really heard before, but it basically refers to the disorder or the chaos in a system. Things turn, tend to become more disordered or more chaotic over time. Think about it. If you clean your bedroom and then you don't do it again and you just live in your room, how is your room going to look in two weeks compared to how it looked right after you cleaned it? There's definitely going to be an increase in entropy. I can say from experience, some of y'all's backpacks, definitely a tendency toward an increase in entropy. Okay, so things tend to become more disordered or more chaotic over time. Entropy is an increase in disorder. The greater the order, on the other hand, the lower the entropy, okay? Something that's a very orderly system would have very low entropy, and we're going to talk about different things that can affect that. Lower order would be greater entropy or greater chaos. So the greater the order, the lower the entropy. The lower the order, the greater the entropy. That's the way it works. So entropy will increase in chemical systems when you have a phase change, but a specific one. Entropy increases when we go from a solid to a liquid, or from a liquid to a gas, or in that rare circumstance of sublimation, if we go straight from a solid to a gas. The more orderly the particles are, the more packed in they are, the less entropy they have, because they are less disordered. So picture an ice cube and then picture some steam. Which of those two conditions contain more chaos or more disorder? Well, it would be the steam. Steam has high entropy and thus it has low order. A solid, on the other hand, very tightly, regularly packed particles would tend to have a very high level of order, which means it would have a low level of entropy. Entropy is disorder or chaos. I always think of it as like, in terms of superheroes, Loki. Loki would all be about the entropy. That really loved disorder. He was a jokester. He liked to stir things up. 
However, on the other hand, to kind of go to the other end of that, you might have, say, Doctor Strange, who's really into meticulousness and order and control of systems. Okay. So let me ask you this. If you wanted to build a barbecue and you had a truck loaded with bricks because you had ordered them to build your barbecue and they back up to your house and you climb into the back and rather than taking off one brick at a time or using a forklift to lift them all off on a pallet, you just start tossing them onto your driveway. What's that pile of bricks going to look like? Well, it's going to be more disordered because you're not preserving the order, that means that it will have a higher entropy. You can kind of think of that like your solid going to a liquid or a gas phase. The less orderly you are, the more entropy you have. So that's similar, like I said, to what happens when we go from a solid to a gas. Now entropy will also increase if we dissolve a solid in a liquid because that solid disassociates from its crystal form into chaotic free-floating ions or molecules. So anytime you dissolve a solid in a liquid, you are increasing your entropy. Likewise, in chemical systems, entropy will increase when we take compounds and we break them down into the elements that make them. So what type of chemical reaction would increase entropy? And what type of chemical reaction would lower it? Think about it for a moment. What type of chemical reaction increases entropy and which would lower it? So if you said that a decomposition reaction increases entropy and synthesis would lower it, you are 100% correct. Because when we take something that's been bonded and it's one compound and we break it into its individual pieces, we increase the disorder. Whenever you have more pieces, you have more disorder. It's like if you sat down to do a puzzle and it's one of those like kindergarten puzzles that has 20 pieces and you dump them out on the table. Pretty easy to put together, low level of disorder. But you pull out one of those 5,000 piece puzzles and you dump that out onto the table, high level of disorder. So the more the particles can move, the less regular arrangement they have, and the more particles there are, you'll always have an increase in disorder. That's it for entropy and enthalpy. They're pretty easy concepts. But the last thing I want to mention is this. The more entropy you are likely to get as the end product of a reaction, the more likely that reaction will be to happen. So the more disordered the outcome, the more likely it is the reaction will occur. We call that a spontaneous reaction. Reactions are much more likely to be spontaneous when their products are releasing energy and more disordered. Thanks. Mm -hmm.